the Lord. Good evening, Fellowship Church. Can we turn my mic down just a little bit, Stephen? Appreciate it. All right. We can be loud in the heavenly realms, but we don't always need to be extremely loud. <laughs> down here. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Bless the Lord. How is everybody tonight? I have a few people walking in over here. Greetings to everybody that's online. So we have uh, about half the half the rows of chairs set up. So we're encouraging people, I guess, to get up front tonight. That's a good thing. Bless the Lord. Father, we thank you for your goodness, God. Thank you for your goodness. Holy Spirit, come and, and be with us minister to our hearts, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Rise up from our innermost being and strengthen our spirits, oh God. All right, bless the Lord. Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. Hear about his glory and his precious blood atoning, and I repented of my sins and won the victory. cleansing power revealing how he made the lame to walk again and cause the blind to see There's a fount that still flows, that 
fount of the blood of Jesus. It's very effective, not only when we come to him the first time, but it keeps us cleansed until we are with him. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus, that your sacrifice was once for all. Not like the blood of bulls and goats that had to be done year after year, but once for all. chains are gone I've been set free my God my Savior has ransomed me like a flood your mercy reigns unending love amazing Oh, God. 
amazing grace God your grace is so amazing your grace is amazing God let our minds be stayed upon you let our minds be stayed upon you Jesus the author and finisher of our faith author and perfecter of our faith. The king who died and who rose again and who even now is on the way. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Yeah. All right. Time of prayer now. Thank you, Mark. Amazing grace. Praise the Lord. Here we are again. Wednesday night, prayer time. I got me the regular big old list. Is there anybody who has a 60 second, 60 second testimony? Well, tell us about what God has done in your life this past week. Is this? I knew you were going to say that, Pastor. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> Let me tell you a blessing. <clears throat> 25 years ago, my knee gave out. So I went into uh, Dr. Rabbit, who is in, of all places, this town. And he said, Marvin, I'm going to fix your knee up for you. I said, it's killing me in the back. He said, I'm going to put a shot right up in the front, cortisone. And he put it in there. When I got off the table, I had no pain, and I could hardly walk for a month. That was 25 years ago. Well, guess what? I haven't been able to walk for a month. I've been stumbling and bumbling. I can't get out of the car. I said, I'm going to go back and see if he's still alive. I went back. I found him. He looks younger than I do, and I told him my problem. I said, you fixed me up 25 years ago. Can you do it again? And he looked at my knees, he said, you got pretty legs. You got pretty, knee, pretty knees, I meant to say. Well, he's looking at the inside, at the bones. And so he uh, said everything was perfect inside. He said, I'm going to do it again. And he put a shot in the front. Now I'm walking again. That was 24 hours ago. Uh -huh. And uh, I'm feeling good. I can't believe that the pain is gone. I said, I'll see you in another 25 years. He said, Marvin, I may not be here. I said, if you're not, instruct your helper here, and I'll see him in 25 years. <laughs> That's just one of the praises. I've been having a time all week. Are you teaching tonight? Yes, sir. So you're going to be getting some more testimonies from him, I'm sure. I, I was kind of anxious to get one of them myself, but I reckon you could do that for, you, for your daughter, Cheryl. Talking about answered prayer, and, you know, we get up here weekly, and more often than that because, you know, we pray at night. We pray through the day, right? Uh, so my testimony today is a prayer. Y'all have been praying with me for my 22-year-old granddaughter, Kayla. We're going back to December while well, she graduated from college in May and she's had a job working on a computer and she could do it at home. And that job was to run out on the 22nd of December, so she started, she's been looking for another one to replace her work. And, um, and as those of us who, let's say, young in the Lord, and we're a little concerned and anxious sometimes of whether God's going to hear us or if he's going to answer us. So Marcus and I went down to, to see uh, Kayla and April took a walk in the park yesterday afternoon, and Kayla was waiting for a, a, a return call from one of her prospective jobs that she applied for and you know they're going to call for a third interview and she says mom I wonder what they're going to call me and tell me I didn't get the job <laughs> you know so I showed her I believe it's Philippians 419 be anxious for nothing but in everything with prayer and supplication and thanksgiving let your request be known unto God for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you maybe I mixed two of them together but anyway uh Later that evening, I got a text saying that she got the job. 
I don't know any more details about the job, but she got the job. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. And thank you for increasing Kayla's faith. Can y'all hear him talking now? On Tuesday. Can you say that again? Yes, my daughter Cheryl, <clears throat> excuse me, got a contract on her house this past Tuesday. And this morning already they're supposed to be in there uh, uh, with the inspectors. And she's supposed to go to settlement, I think, the first week in April, which is a real answer to prayer. Amen. That's buddy. quick. Amen. And you mentioned to me that they even want to buy what furniture she's got in there. Yeah. She's got a formal dining room set, a nice formal china cabinet to go with it. Great big massive bed in the master bedroom, and a, I guess you call it a, um, a wardrobe. It's one of those closets like you see in that movie. Yeah, the wind. No, the one, the, the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe, right? Oh, yeah, great big wardrobe closet. Anyway. Anyway. Randy did some amazing work in there, especially on that ceramic tile. I had lots of fun <coughs> swirling around some paint. And thankfully, I didn't have to worry about the carpet. <laughs> Day one, I spilled some paint on the carpet upstairs. Thank you, Jesus. OK, so <clears throat> I see my time is running out. And let's see, OK. And, and it's not that I have two lists as long, it's just that I got some add-ons once we got started. And we're going to go into the list and I think I'll start with the add-ons. Jerry McCauley had a hip replacement on Monday, so we're praying for a quick recovery. Oh, he's having one this coming Monday. Thank you for correcting me. Jerry McCauley is your brother, Donna's brother. Wonderful. Okay, and Penny, Maxim, Penny Maxim has a mass in her bladder. Lord Jesus, we pray that you dissolve that mass if it's cancerous. We pray you get all cancerous cells out of her body. We know that you are able. You're still in the healing business. Thank you and praise you for giving her comfort. And Bill Latimer, is, in, is that Bill Sr.? Is in the hospital. Doing okay. Doing okay. Thank you for that, Lord. And I think uh, we're going to jump into the prayer list from there. Okay, so again, I don't have the particulars. We're thanking God for that He has saved. These are mostly people who are on the church list as members. Some may not be, but we're praying for salvation for anyone who is not. Praying for healing who is in need of it. Praying for relationships to be healed and strengthened. Uh, for bills to be paid. Not only to be paid, but Jesus taught that we learn how to earn the money to keep the bills paid on a regular basis. Praise you, Lord, for that. Uh, Cover all prayer. Let's see. Okay, so we're just going to jump on in and read right on through. So Jalen Allman, Maddie Andrenson, Caleb Bailey, who is incarcerated, and I like to point out those who are because, you know, it's a very lonely and boring situation to be in and fearful. It can be quite fearful. And we pray, God, to be the Lord of his incarceration and the day of his release. And we'll also add uh, Michelle Park, Cindy Levering, and Greg Foster. And anybody else that you all know who are incarcerated and those who are in rehabs, including the Jude House, or those who are going to the Jude House at this time, we thank you, Lord, for deliverance from addictions and chemical dependency. <clears throat> Dave Beam and his wife Toby for their neighbor Cassie. Carolyn Beeman, Pastor, you said that uh, Renee, Carolyn's daughter, Renee and Carolyn are 
up in Virginia because Renee's sister is terminally ill. So we're praying for Renee's sister. I don't have that first name. Jean? Jean. Renee Miller's sister, Jean. Okay, she's on the list. <laughs> Carol and Beeman. Uh, Kim Belusi. Carol Bowie. Dana Brown. Jacob Burke. Helen Cooper. Marissa Crown. Ashley Enstrom and her sons, Aiden and Emery. Uh, Bethany, Bethany Gibson, comma, Rick, comma, M, Emily, comma, L or Ellie. Mary Gibson, Jesse Gilroy, Patty Griffith, Dory Hardesty, Kimberly Harris, Dale Hay, Brody Heath, her mother and daughter, Michelle, Ed Horn in hospital, Roswell Henson, Maria Jones, and son Chuck Jones, Sarah Eisenhart, Robin Keyes, Margaret King, Stan Kocheski, comma Joe and Dixie. Cindy, oh, that might be my Cindy Levery. Thank you, Donna. Uh, Sheila Lundstrom, the Melberg family, and Pat's mother, Doris. Jane Mathail, Carolyn McConkey, Bill McConical, comma Heather and Axel, Lowell Moore, Mike Morris, the Charles Newman family, or Charles Newman and family, uh, Joe Phillips, Andy Rander, Owen Riley, Debbie Roberts, comma Pat, comma Paul, and Samantha, the Santucci family. Garnett Anderson and her son Brian, Terry Averson, Brandon Baldwin, Dottie Bedell, Gary Beeman and family, Debbie Boer, Charles Bridget, Harry Burgers and Roxanne, Doris Chesser, Michelle Corley, Denise Culberson, Cheryl Farr, Yvonne Gibson, David Gilroy, Linda Grady, Joan Hall and Steve Sr. Donna Harris. Tommy Harris, comma Lisa and family. Jeremy Keith and Cass. Christopher Hidalgo. Joseph Houston. Tony Ensco. Joey and Mary. Joseph, comma Kelly and family. Doug King. Ginger Conigan and AJ. Carrie Langley, Nellie Linder, Ken and Lorraine Mahan, Ella and Evan Mason, Carrie McClure, Denise McKelvey, Al Mills and Mary Jane, Trudy Monroe, Jerry and Linda Muchel, Mrs. Purdy, Emily Remo, Brian Roberts and Brooklyn, comma, Tyler, Stephen Russell, Eleanor Sayers, Melissa Seacrest, Macy Shumpert for surgery, Betty Stepp, Michelle Sullivan, T. Tex and John, Jane Turner, Mike Twig, Wade, comma, Madison and family, Carla Whitley, Michelle Waddell, James Fit. Patrick, uh, Jordan Schrader, and Baby. Schrader, comma, Jordan, and the Baby. Kristen Stockman, Aiden Sweeney, Rejoice Teneriff, <clears throat> Barb Tuttle, Glenda Verley's mom, Lilio, Bob Wen, Robbie Williams, and Madison. Jensen, who is in ICU. We're praying, Father, for the peace of Israel and those other countries surrounding them. And uh, we do pray, Lord, that uh, you give them peace and wisdom as they <coughs> have the difficulty in maintaining peace in their country. Praying for the Christian schools, including Fellowship uh, <coughs> Southern Maryland Christian Academy. Thank you and praise you, Jesus. Uh, Let's see, those who are in 
the military, Jacob Houston, Ashley Baldo, Billy Heath, Jeffrey Keyes Jr., Anthony Baldo, Nathan Scott, Charlie Burke, Brandon Hardesty, Adam Corley. Lord God, we thank you and praise you ever so much for calling us to prayer, hearing us praying, and answering our prayers. Thank you, Lord, for calling us your own. Thank you for being faithful eternally. To your honor and glory, and in your son Jesus' name, we pray your blessing on Pastor Marvin and his lesson that we listen attentively and apply it to our Christian lives. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mark. Would you drag that uh, <coughs> microphone over here? <coughs> Excuse me, everybody. <coughs> All right. I've had a great week. You know, I preached on revival a couple weeks ago, and I have been revived. I will tell you that. I am excited, and I want to tell you how the blessings that have come this week. I got a call late last week, and I was asked to do a funeral at Hump Funeral Home, and I told them I'd love to, and I had a wonderful time with that family, about 30 people, and uh, several decisions for the Lord Jesus, and uh, I met many new friends. It was just such a blessing. That was on Monday. Let me back up. Saturday, we had our largest crowd ever at the Jude House. That was a blessing. And we had several decisions there. What about blessing? And then, uh, of course, Tuesday, my daughter got a contract on her house. And here we are Wednesday. And I've been to the, let's see, two hospitals and several other homes. This Sunday, by the way, we're going to at the altar, we're going to pray for uh, little Christopher. Uh, his mom is Nora. His dad is Vince. Uh, he's having some physical problems, so we're going to pray for him. Also, one name that's not on the list is uh, Ed Horn's uh, uh, son-in-law, Steve. He's in the hospital. So we pray for them. And also, I think we mentioned, uh, 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 let's see, Jill Brady who was uh, going through some operations. And we just pray that, Lord, you'll bless her and protect her and help her to get through this without any problem. We love you, Lord Jesus. In your name we ask these things. Amen. Well, now we're going to go to the uh, Sermon on the Mount, uh, written for individual believers. And we're going to go to chapter 5, and we're going to focus on on fulfillment. I also want to mention I thought we had a great Sunday service. It was a blessing. Chris and his wife, uh, we had that wonderful cake and everything. It was a joy. Praise God. The structure of the Sermon on the Mount is remarkably beautiful. First, we see the Beatitudes that deal with our inner character and righteousness. Second, we see the Lord give us three different metaphors or comparisons about salt and light, emphasizing our responsibilities in this world as believers and impressing on us the effects of our inner righteousness on those around us. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20 say, You are not your own. You've been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body uh, and, and in your spirit, which are his, which are God's. And the third thing we're looking at, Jesus explains that his focus upon fulfilling the word of God. Uh, when we focus on obeying the word of God in our lives, we find fulfillment in our lives. Amen. That's for sure. So point number one today, we see the purpose of of Christian ministry. Matthew 5, 17, Jesus said, and we're going to look at several points tonight that I think will really encourage you and maybe clear up your mind on certain things. Think not that I am coming to the world to destroy the law of the prophets. I have not come to destroy them, but to fulfill them. When I realized I was a sinner years ago, 1977, uh, 
and I was lost. I thought, well, I'll keep the Ten Commandments. And then I read those, and I thought, hey, wait a minute. I've broken some of these. Is there any hope for me? I remember I had the body shop on one side of Rhode Island Avenue in Hyattsville, and the county built a mega courthouse on the other side of the road. And I used to think that I was back alley, uh, you know, from, from the back, uh, you know, the, the, the lower class type body shops. Uh, but then one day it hit me after years of being there that, hey, wait a minute. I've got the Ten Commandments on my wall and the mega multi-million dollar courthouse, they can't put them on their wall. Are you with me? So I thought, I am on the right side of the tracks. I'm not on the wrong side. I'm on the right side. Can I get an amen? I'm thankful that the law was not given to us as a means of salvation. We'd never make it. The law was designed to show people their sin, their sinfulness, and then drive them to God for his gracious salvation. This is good. The law tells us, or tells me, how crooked I am. Then grace comes along and straightens us out. Can I get an amen? amen. Praise God for the God that we have. James 2.10 says, For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend it in one point, is guilty of all. According to the law, we're all under the curse of death. That's why Jesus came to this earth. He came and he took our place. He was our substitute. I like Hebrews uh, 7, verses 23 through 27. I'd like to read them to you. And there were many priests, because uh, they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But this man, the Lord Jesus, because he continueth forever, has an unchangeable priesthood. Therefore he is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing that he ever liveth to make intercession for them. For such a high priest became us, praise God, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who needeth not, to, uh, not, who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people, for this he did once when he offered up himself. What a God we serve. He became us. I love that. I use that quite often. He offered up himself. He's interceding for us. He's praying for us. What more could we want? God's laws are to protect us from the pain and the destruction of sinful living. Did you all catch all that? Now, point number two, the preservation of God's word. Matthew 5, 18. For verily I say unto you that heaven and earth, I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, let me say it one more time. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot, or one tittle shall not, shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Did you catch all that? Uh, not one jot. In the Hebrew, one jot, jot is the smallest letter like an apostrophe. One little, and not one jot. Uh, and there are 6,664, 60,420, I'm sorry, uh, of these, did I say that right? Yeah, these jots in, in the Old Testament. The word tittle 
and the Hebrew, uh, this is like a teeny extension on some letters, like the bottom of the stroke of an E, uh, uh, or, or uh, uh, like the bottom little edge of a R, which makes it a P. Not one jot nor one tittle, he says, uh, let me repeat that verse. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Not one of these little uh, jots or, or these tittles will pass from the law and, and the prophets until everything is accomplished. The Jews were exceedingly cautious. And one change meant destroying the whole manuscript. Imagine that. Doing it by hand, not computer. One comma uh, or, or a jot or tittle. John 10, 35 says, Unto him, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. I like that, don't you? In the 16th century, I don't know if you've ever heard this or not, Fairy tales were violent. Did you know that? Amen. Children of that age were believed to be miniature adults. They were exposed to filthy, vulgar language, sex, liquor, drugs, violence, cruelty, and death. Many people do not realize in the original versions of the popular tales that they were violent and gruesome and, and had been changed to tone down through the years. For example, Sleeping Beauty does not end happily. Once the princess was wakened from a kiss, her troubles just begun. She was raped and abandoned and her illegitimate twin children were threatened with cannibalism. In the authentic version of Little Red Riding Hood, the wolf has yet to digest the grandmother when he pounces on Red, uh, ripping her to pieces, limb from limb. What an awful thing. Fairy tales may change, but Jesus makes it clear that his words will never pass away. Amen. Holy Scripture and his teachings will not change. Time and time again, when the Lord quotes the Old Testament, he uses the perfect tense, it is written, which means it is or was written. Uh, it is written and it will be always, and it will always be written. Can I get an amen? It blesses me that the scriptures are more enduring than our universe. Amen. Matthew 24, 35. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. This is important to us. Can I get an amen? Praise God. We have a word that is uh, heaven inspired, Holy Spirit written. The book has been so attacked as the Bible yet has been so attacked. Let me say it again. No book has been so attacked as the Bible, yet no book has survived so well as the Bible. Voltaire, does anybody remember that name? He was the famous uh, atheist that tried to destroy the Bible. I believe he was living in England, yes. And when he died, his home became the Bible distribution center in England. And he was trying to destroy it. Uh, looking at uh, 1 Peter 1, 23 through 25, we read, For even here unto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow in his steps. Who knew no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, like a lamb before the slaughter, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously, 
who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live under righteousness, by whose stripes ye are healed. For we were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and the bishop of our souls. Praise God. Isaiah 40, verse 8 says, The grass withereth, and the flower fadeth, but the word of God shall stand forever. Isn't that a blessing? When I'm dead and gone, Donna, would you put my Bible in the casket with me and duct tape it to my arm? I'm going to take it with me. Can I get an amen? <laughs> Point number three, the performance of God's commands, Matthew 5, 19. Whosoever therefore shall break one of the least of these commandments uh, and teach men so, uh, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them the same shall be great in the kingdom of heaven. Did I say that right? Huh? Yeah. Did I say, let me let me read that one more time. Whosoever, verse nineteen, therefore shall break one of these, the least of these commandments, and shall teach men so. He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them the same, uh, the right way, shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. We can appear on the outside to be obeying the word or the Lord but our heart may be filled with resistance toward the Lord Jesus. Isaiah 29, 13. Therefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near to me with their mouth, and with their lips they do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me. It's a heart thing. This life, we need to realize, it's not a head knowledge, it's a heart knowledge. And their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Where is your heart today? Job said of his kids, you remember this? This has always amazed me. It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. On their outward appearance, they were fine, but on the inside. So he would pray and, uh, and put up offerings for his sons. Uh, they may have appeared normal on the outside. If you start breaking the least, the least commandments, they are bait for more destructive sins because they get us into the habit of disobeying God. An example of that is a little white lie. What's a little white lie? Uh, you know, when I think of little things, Randy, I always, I wrote this down, I always think of you. Not because you lie, but when you got that big tree down out there, and there was a little tree beside it, but it had a couple little vines that went over from the big tree down to the little tree, off of a branch that was at least 20 foot long. And when Randy cut the small tree down, those little vines were so powerful and strong they pulled this massive branch off of that big tree, and I'm telling you, it went just like this. If he would have stepped one foot forward, I do believe you would have been killed. Little things, wow. And a little white lie in our lives. Some Christians disobey and will have no honor in heaven. You know, I always think of Jack Howes, who was quite a wild, crazy preacher. But he told about this. He said this, Satan does not want you to do bad in the flesh. Did I say that right? Yeah. He wants you to do good in the flesh. And he gave an example I've always remembered. A young girl comes in and she's going to sing for the first time in church. And she's nervous and she's praying and praying. And she sings a song, and she breaks down, and she's crying in the middle of it. But it stirred everybody. Everybody was thrilled. 
what a blessing. But a year later, after she had sang several times, she wasn't praying anymore. She would get up and sing. And she was doing good in the flesh. You see what I'm saying? Uh, Satan wants you to do good in the flesh. But when she started, she was praying in the spirit, asking God to bless her. So we want to do, uh, some Christians, we don't want to dishonor God. Those who encourage others to obey God's word by their actions and teaching will be called great in God's kingdom. One day by your obedience, you'll be honored in glory. I'm thankful for Bill. He must study. Oh, my goodness. I'd have to quit. I don't know how you do it. When I study, I love to eat. Nobody in here has that problem. When I get up in the middle of the night and study, I love to nibble. I can't imagine if I studied as much as you must, Bill. I'd probably weigh four or 500 pounds. Can I get an amen? Listen, one day your obedience will be honored and glory. Maybe not here, but up there, where it counts for all eternity. Same with you, Jim. I know you must practice all the time. What a blessing. What, uh, how relentless. I mean, you, you're determined. And that song at the beginning tonight, one of my favorites. If you want to be great in God's eyes, then let's focus on fulfilling God's word. Point number one, we see the purpose of Christ's ministry. Number two, the preparation of God's word. Number three, the performance of God's commands. Number four, the precedent to enter God's kingdom. Matthew 5, 20. Can you hear me now? For I say unto you that except your righteousness, this always had me uh, question years ago, questioning. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter the kingdom of heaven. I've always wondered about that verse. I like what J. Vernon McGee said about it. The Pharisees had a high degree of righteousness according to the law, but that was not acceptable. Uh, it was an outwardly uh, righteousness. Truth is, they were extreme hypocrites. How can you and I surpass their righteousness? Jesus said, Jesus said this about them. They were a wicked bunch, a generation of vipers. Is it possible in our efforts uh, we need the Lord Jesus Christ? It is impossible in our efforts. We need the Lord Jesus Christ to do it for us. A proof of that is uh, Romans 4, 22 and to 24. For therefore... It was imputed to him for righteousness. To impute means to ascribe goodness to a person as coming from another. Now it was not written for his own sake, but it was imputed to him. Let me read 30, 24. But for us also to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. Let me read it one more time. I'm doing a lot of reading tonight, but that's okay. But for us also to whom it shall be imputed, our sins imputed, forgiven, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus from the dead, uh, if we believe on Jesus who raised, if let me kill one more time. We believe on him that raised up Jesus, our Lord, from the dead. That's faith. Friend, if you're saved here, you're clothed in his righteousness. When God looks at you, he sees his son. Jesus was our substitute. Amen? This is, this is a very deep, I think. Matthew 5, 20, it says, I'm going to read it again. 
For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. I've always wondered about that. The words in no case uh, enter into the kingdom of heaven and no case is in the Greek and it's a double negative they say. That is absolute and permanent. A double negative shows up in many places in scripture. An example of that, John 6, 37. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And he that cometh unto me shall in no wise be cast out. No wise is a double negative. Absolutely no one will be cast out. Are you with me? John 20, 10, 28. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Never is a double negative. No one will be lost from his hands. The righteousness of God expects, the righteousness God expects is made available as a free gift to those who believe in Jesus. And this is the righteousness that would exceed that of the scribes and Pharisees when we put our faith and the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords. I like this thought. Those who are in love sometimes sign their letters XXX. Ever see that? Donna, did you used to do that to me? On my letter, when I would write your love letters. XXX. What's the old stand for? Forget it? I'm just kidding you. Huh? All right, let me say this again. Uh, those who are in love sometimes sign their letters XXX. The custom of doing this goes back to the Christian era where an X conveyed the force of a sword oath, sworn oath, uh, or a promise that would not be broken. In the days where few people could write their signature cross or X, was legal and valid. Uh, to emphasize their secure, sincerity of their mark, they would kiss the X that was made. It was a practice of kissing, it was this practice of kissing the X that led it to become a symbol for a kiss. Beloved, God has promised us in his word that if we trust in him, he will give us eternal life. And, this, and his XXX is on this promise, which is backed by the love of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world, and he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Can I get an Amen. Amen. One more story. I got three more seconds. Oh, when I talked about the pre preservation of God's word, I like this story. There was a story about a student in Cambridge University who entered the classroom on exam day and asked the proctor to bring him cakes and ale. The proctor refused, expressing astonishment at the young man's audacity. At this point, the student read from the 400-year-old laws of Cambridge, which were written in Latin and still nominally in effect. The passage read by the student said, gentlemen sitting for examinations may request and require cakes and ale. The proctor was forced to comply, but Pepsi and hamburgers were judged as the modern equivalent. So the necessity accommodations were made for the student, 
After all, the law was on his side. Three weeks later, the student was summoned to the Office of Academic Affairs to face disciplinary action and was assessed a fine of five pounds. He was not fined for demanding cakes and ale, but for blatantly disregarding another obscure Cambridge law. If he had failed to wear a sword to the examination, the student lived by the law and was also judged by the law to the T. The Cambridge laws, good or bad, were still preserved. That's interesting, isn't it? Praise God. Aren't we glad that we have a perfect Bible? Let's, uh, Brother Jim, would you close this with a song? Or do you want me to sing? No, never mind. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We just pray you'll use this tonight for your glory. I thank you for uh, a book that we can read and trust. In your name, Lord Jesus, amen. Do you need this? Oh, wow. Hey, Steve, can you pull up, pull up thy word? About, uh, let's honor the Lord. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. to my feet and a light unto my path. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your word. And not only that, but like you said, the word of the Lord stands forever. You didn't say that, but basically you said that. <laughs> but the word of the Lord stands forever. And we can trust it because it's a reflection reflection of God and who he is. He never changes. His word never changes. Amen? That's right. Amen. So, Father, thank you for that, that we have your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. And, uh, you know, I'm going to just dismiss everybody. Father, uh, guide us and protect us during the week. I have assuming you want me to pray. And uh, thank you for this evening, Lord God. 
And uh, help us get into your word, Father. Help us get into your word and to understand it. Let the Holy Spirit help us to understand your word and draw us closer to you in Jesus' name.